All right, guys. Probably a soon-to-be stormy deluge in the Finger Lakes of New York in the summer of 2024. Imagine that on this cloudy. It is a it is a Wednesday afternoon, I think. <clears throat> July 24, 2024, so as I <clears throat> ride out the storm here in the protection of the community kitchen, uh, <coughs> <coughs> I'm over here at medium.com and I cannot decide between we are all doomsday preppers now, but we are screwed anyway. Or you are an idiot if you are saving the earth for future generations. So, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to sit here and read both of them. I think I will make two uh, shorter videos instead of one. Uh... <coughs> one long one if my camera doesn't fall off the coffee pot. Let's start out with good old Patrick Metzger. I haven't read anything from Patsker. Patsker. There you go. In a while. We are all doomsday preppers now. Well, not sure about that. But we're screwed anyway. Yes, we are. Uh, these doomsday preppers. Come on, please. <clears throat> Last week, I was on a work call when the lights went out and the Wi-Fi died, uh, which might be getting ready to happen here for the third time here in a minute. I was surprised because while the rain had been bucketing down in arc-worthy fashion for hours, I had not seen the high winds or lightning I usually associate with power outages. I know which side my paycheck is buttered on, so I dialed back in on my phone, affecting a tone of noble forbearance and advising everyone who did not care that I was sitting in the dark. But look at me, here I am anyway. Upon learning that my two colleagues in Toronto were also off the grid, I was disappointed because now any sympathy would be divided three ways instead of coming only to me. On the other hand, misery loves company. Fortunately, no sympathy was forthcoming. Instead, a Brazilian co-worker most of our software engineers are in Brazil or Armenia, said with a sly smile that he thought Canada had first world infrastructure. A jab met with uproarious laughter from his compatriots. <clears throat> the call ended and lacking VPN, I have no clue what VPN is, the call ended and lacking VPN or laptop, I wandered the house like a lonely ghoul at midnight, listening to the rain and wondering why I owned neither candles nor matches nor batteries. All I found was an ancient wind-up flashlight that emits a dim, useless light as long as you're cranking away <clears throat> like a 10th grader who has just discovered Pornhub and is handy only for illuminating objects less than six inches away. My power was restored eight hours later, an interval during which I reflected on how ill-prepared I was for minor inconveniences, let alone catastrophe. I resolved to do better. As luck would have it, the day prior I had loaded up my Amazon cart with a freeze-dried food supply with a 25-year shelf life guaranteed to ward off starvation for 30 days. For one person, my 11-year-old has seen Mad Max and understands that he is on his own if society collapses. <clears throat> 
I pulled the trigger on buying the grub as well as a hundred water purification tablets because freeze-dried stroganoff is not much good if the water you make it with is full of dysentery. I had browsed emergency supplies before, but it was no coincidence that I had carted them at this time. I had been thinking about it since a spate of news stories about how Costco is now selling emergency food supplies. Doomsday prepping has entered the American mainstream. Getting ready for the end times isn't new. In the 1950s, suburban families installed prefab fallout shelters, sneering at less fortunate neighbors destined to be gl glowing cannibal mutants. More recently, the TV show Doomsday Preppers brought apocalypse planning yes, into the public eye. It made a big splash, even though it only had a two-year run, presumably because the producers ran out of ways to make a barn full of guns and dried beans seem interesting. In the early days of the corona panic, terrified shoppers swarmed Walmart to load up on toilet paper, <clears throat> showing enthusiasm for the prepping concept but a flawed grasp of the practical exigencies of post-collapse survival. <clears throat> Still, prepping remained a niche associated with bearded pastorals and camo gear saying things like, them feds better stay off in my land. <clears throat> this Costco offering, however, announces that the lifestyle is no longer just for people worried about Bill Gates injecting them with a microchip. As humanity actively pursues self-extinction via climate change, nukes, pandemics, AI, and the global rise of new fascism, there's a growing interest in near-time upheaval and how to survive it. Fortunately, there are plenty of sellers to meet the demand, and right-wing media have you covered. The Blaze will put you on an email list for vendors pitching not just food security, but gold, meds, and Trump-branded knives for stabbing bears and antifas. Boxes of food and discount penicillin aren't enough to make you feel safe? Buy yourself an abandoned mine for $1.2 million. <clears throat> or hunker down in a decommissioned silo for only $750,000. If a giant hole in the ground is too rich for your blood, consider a membership at Fortitude Ranch a franchised chain of survivalist compounds that double as vacation timeshares. Whatever your apocalypse budget, there is a solution to meet your needs when the shit hits the fan or SHTF, S -H -T -F, as the pros say. The trend is terrifying. In the face of real existential threats, we are abandoning the goal of a functional society and turning out resources toward ensuring individual survival. It's tempting with chaos on the horizon, but it is also stupid. Don't get me wrong, short-term emergency planning is vital or I would not have a bucket of powdered eggs in the basement and solar-powered battery power to keep my popsicles stiff during blackouts. Climate change is getting worse 
and wherever you live, something is coming for you, whether it's heat waves or hurricanes or rain events like we had here last week and we might be having here again in five minutes. Nope, best to keep a few supplies on hand. <clears throat> But as far as navigating a full-on societal collapse, you won't, at least not for long, or in any way that approaches a modern lifestyle. Even if you're the love child of Daniel Boone and Bear Grylls with a U-Haul full of guns, batteries, and Nutella, the structural supports of modern civilization simply will not be available. Topping the list of missing necessities are medicines and vaccines, both requiring a complex supply chain that won't exist post-apocalyptically. Before these medical advances, most children did not live past the age of five, and people routinely died of infections that could have been cured with a course of amoxicillin. If you have got diabetes requiring regular insulin, you might have a year before your stock goes bad, assuming you can keep it cold. And unless you're the professor from Gilligan's Island, you likely cannot build an MRI machine out of bamboo and coconuts. Speaking of machinery, all your gear, from solar panels to night vision, <clears throat> goggles is eventually going to have to be fixed or replaced when the mines stop digging, the factories stop producing, and the container ships from China stop pulling into port. Good luck finding parts. And hey, Mad Max, gasoline breaks down after around six months, so have a refinery handy if you plan to keep driving the Escalade. The bottom line is whether you are a noob prepper like me or a Zuckerberg drinking mimosas in a 260 million dollar bunker, eventually your shit is going to break or run out and you will be li living the life of a medieval English serf, only worse because they had skills and you don't. The apocalypse won't be as much fun as Hollywood promised. Instead of crouching in caves and basements to, survi to survive as individuals, we have to work as communities to prepare for what's coming. We need to harden our infrastructure against extreme weather, minimize the waste of diminishing resources like water, and prepare for refugees both internal and external at the macro level we need to reduce greenhouse gases so our grandkids don't live on an irreversible hothouse earth. To prepare for the next pandemic, because it's coming, smart money is on avian flu, but we could see a black swan event. Ha! Can we do it? Can we do it? I think... Uh, there we have a three-letter uh, answer to can we do it, A-G-H. In the U.S., the Trump Republicans are proposing policies that would effectively doom the global climate change fight and have widely promoted laws gutting the ability of public health authorities to fight disease. Thus, it's not surprising that the anti-science cult of the right is so obsessed with societal collapse, their avowed plans are likely to cause it. This is the reason why I am saying anyone cheering on the collapse of global industrial civilization needs to vote for Donald Trump because he is the man for the job. 
I'm not being Canadian smug. We've got our own set of useful idiots with lips sanctioned to Trump's nether cheeks, and they could very well win the next ele election. So it goes. I can only vote and ha ha and ha and vote and ha. I can only vote and ha ha for the best. I'll just sit tight, weep quietly, and ha ha and ha ha and, and ha 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 that a rainstorm or two is as bad as it gets for now. If you're in the neighborhood, drop by for a bowl of powdered mac and cheese. But uh, I was going to uh, double uh, that up with a similar uh, essay right beside it called You're an Idiot If You're Saving the Earth for Future Generations, uh, which is another ain't gonna happen. Uh, but I have some uh, hash browns in the air fryer I need to get to before the next rain event hits bugs in a jar farm. My God.